In a moment, I'll show you two landscape photos and I want you to decide which was taken with the widest lens. Was it photograph A or was it photograph B? But before I tell you the answer, I want you to decide which you think is most eye-catching. Have you made your decision? Good. Most people will pick photograph B as being the most eye-catching. And that's really interesting because the thing is, both of these photos were taken using the same lens at the same focal length. But if there's no difference in the focal length, how come people pick photo B and think it was shot with the widest lens? The answer to that question is the secret I want to share with you in this video. But just before we come to that, you need to answer one more question. What was the focal length I used to shoot these photos? Was it 16mm? 20mm or 24mm, and to avoid confusion we're talking in full frame terms here. I'll share the answer with you shortly. Now let's look at how I shot this photo so you can see the secret to wide angle landscapes in action. Did you spot it? Let me show you again but slower and this time I'll point it out. Notice how I'm holding the camera. It's probably not much more than 12 inches from the floor when I'm taking the shot. But it isn't how close it is to the floor that's important. It's that the sand ripples on the floor are the key element in the frame. This means I need to get really close to them to make them appear dominant. In the first image I showed you, I was in the same spot, but standing up. Even that small change in height was enough to transform the photo. The reason this happens is that wide angle lenses stretch perspective, making subjects appear further away than they are. Even the distance of the camera from the ground created by standing up becomes distorted. Subjects that you think are close to the camera now appear much smaller and become lost in the frame. You often need to get very close to an object to make it dominant. My three section tripod measures 73 centimeters at its lowest and that ignores the extra height from the tripod head. Often this isn't close enough to emphasize the wide angle view. Many photographers who encounter this problem end up switching to an even wider lens, but that doesn't work. It just makes the subject smaller and appear further away from the camera. Do you remember the focal length question I asked earlier? What did you decide? Was the photo shot with a 24mm, 20 or 16mm lens? The answer was 24mm. And I expect many of you watching this video have a 24mm lens, but don't think of it as being wide enough for this kind of effect. Well it is, but let's have a look at an example using an even wider lens this way. Here I'm shooting the sand ripples again, but this time with my lens at 10mm on a micro four thirds camera. That's the equivalent of a 20mm lens on a full frame camera. It's a wide focal length, but it's nowhere near as extreme as many photographers use. As before, I'm getting low and in close to the sand that I want to dominate the frame. It's this low perspective that's going to make the image more eye-catching. And here's the shot I took. The tiny foreground sand ripples now dominate the lower parts of the frame because I'm so low and near to them. Following this approach of getting low and near to your subject, you're going to capture more dramatic images. But there are some problems that you need to be aware of. First, you need to use the tilt screen on your camera, otherwise you can't get low enough. When you saw me taking the shots earlier, you can see that I'm looking down at the camera screen. This allows me to get lower and closer to the sand. I couldn't have done this using the camera viewfinder, otherwise I'd be lying down on the beach. The second problem happens when you tilt the camera. When I'm shooting, notice that I'm keeping the camera level so that the back of the camera is vertical. This helps to keep any verticals in the frame vertical. When I tilt the camera, even slightly, it creates a converging verticals effect. Sometimes the converging verticals effect works very well with some images, as in this shot, but sometimes it doesn't. If we go back to the first photograph I shared at the start, you can see some convergence in the verticals of the pier, even though I did my best to avoid it. When this happens, you can turn to software to fix the problem. Here's how the finished image looks after the verticals have been corrected. I did this very easily using the Nick Perspective Effects plugin in the Nick collection. Then there's a third problem concerning depth of field. Because we're close to the subject, it might be difficult to keep distant objects in focus. 
You could use focus stacking to increase the depth of field, but that's going to be very difficult with hand holding the camera. A better option is to stop down the aperture and try to pick the best point of focus. Both of these photos are captured using an aperture of f10, and here are the focus points I used. When working handheld like this, you can't afford to get scientific about calculating the optimum aperture and focus point. Instead, take a photo, check the results, then adjust your settings if you need to. If you still can't achieve enough depth of field, try using Topaz Sharpen AI. In this video, I explain how to use it to fix photos like this, where I couldn't get enough depth of field. It's surprisingly effective. 